Hello everybody, welcome back to another Batania tutorial. Now today's tutorial is going to be a little bit of a different one. This is going to be kind of a, uh, a myth busting type thing or really just trying to figure out things, test things out, science the hell out of Batania as much as we can and yeah, just test things out. So what we're going to be testing out today is when is it efficient to use an exoflame instead of just putting your coal or whatever you're using into mana. So that is what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at all these tests that I've done, there's more just going everywhere. We've done a lot of tests and we've got a lot of results and really it is conclusive. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be sciencing the hell out of this. And for those of you that don't know, I actually am very big into my science. So I enjoy stuff like this. All right. So here we are with the basic materials and this is going to serve as the control because I mean, we need to know what we're comparing against. So this will be the normal way of burning things in your furnace. Now, these are pretty common knowledge, but we're going to test them out ourselves to double check that everything is exactly the same. And it's pretty straightforward. We're going to be putting coal in there, one block of coal, one, oh, sorry, one piece of coal, one block of coal, one blaze rod, and one bucket of lava. And we should know exactly how much will come from each of these. But, I mean, we can never be too sure. So what we'll do is we'll come back here and press this button, which is connected to these two redstone mana spreaders, or pulse mana spreaders which will drop those two blocks. So what we'll do is we'll check how many gold blocks we can get. And by the way, before I do that, each and every one of these chests are filled up with gold blocks. Nothing's in the hoppers. There's nothing in these chests down the bottom here. And whatever's in these chests at the bottom here will give us our number we need to see which one is doing what. So let's get started with this. All right, now that those have gone through, let's check how many that they have done. So first one, the coal. Eight ingots of gold. The block of coal should be, yep, 80. Now for the ingot, uh, for the, sorry, the blaze rod, it's 12 ingots there. And for the lava bucket, it should be 100. So that's 64 plus 36, which is 100. All right, so we're gonna be doing the same test again but using the flowers that would actually eat those materials that we just used over there to make mana. So we're going to use that to get mana so we can see how much mana comes from each and every one of these substances and then put that into an exoflame and see whether or not that is efficient in the furnace. So what we'll do is we'll start off by dropping one of these on there and that gets eaten. I was standing right on top of it. That's why you didn't see it. So we'll do it again. In the same order, and then here. And then the last one will be the thermally. And that's just eaten there. Now, you may be wondering why we've got these weird setups here. So we've got a mana distributor in the middle with four mana pools around it. And the reason for that is because what I have experienced when I tested this out last time, because I've actually done these tests before, and what I experienced last time was that some because i was using sparks to pull through these diluted mana pools and when i was doing that i found that some was getting stuck in the diluted mana pool a little bit so i found the best thing to do would be to go into one of these distribute it evenly and just tally up those four there and that one's actually done right now these will still take a bit of time and also just to quickly clarify why i use the diluted mana pools and not the normal mana pool and that is because it's a bit more accurate because it's a little bit smaller so you can actually see how much mana we're getting so that is the reasoning for it. Now, this one, I'm fairly certain, doesn't fill up any more than that. And I'll just wait for these cooldowns to finish off, just to make sure there's no mana coming out of anything. Now, I don't think I explained this as well. The mana spreader is also for that same reason of not filling up too much. Now, the small mana spreader will fill up to a little bit and send it, but when you're using the Gaia mana spreader or the Elven mana spreader, it tends to take a bit longer, it takes a bit more mana before it actually sends through the burst. So that's the reason for this mana spreader. All right, so now that these are all finished, we can get to the actual testing that we wanted to do. So we've got the same setup we had before. We've got the furnaces over here, and by the way, these don't have to be timed all together. The reason I timed those ones together was because we're going to use that as the timer as well for a future test. Now, over here, we've got all of these connected, and I've put some mana sparks on them. And you can see these sparks over here are all connected. I've got some sparks on there. None of these are connected to each other. They're just out of range. And what we're going to do is we're going to place one of these down here. And you can see that's just connected to that mana pool. But we're going to want to use all this mana and see how much 
gold we can make from this mana. So we're going to put a dominant spark on there. You can see all of that mana's moved into there. Now, we'll do the same to the next one over here. We'll place one of these down. Place one of these on there. And that seems to work a charm. We'll do it again. One of these. One of those. And the last one. One of these. Oh, oh I guess that'll work. And we'll place one of those on there then. And that should all work now. So each of these do have gold in them. I'm not going to go through all of them. There's definitely nothing in these chests as well. I'm just going to break these blocks and it should start everything. And I'll be back once we have got everything finished. So I'll break each of these before I go. There. And there. All of them are now on. The Exoflame is in range, by the way, of these furnaces. That actually has quite a big range. And we'll just wait now. Alrighty, now they are all finished, each and every one of them. We'll see how much mana is left behind as well. Let's just quickly check this out. So you can see there's a very tiny bit left in that mana spreader. All of that is done. And in here, we've got five gold ingots. So that was the normal coal to five gold ingots, which is a little bit less. I mean, that's 30... What is that? Oh, sorry, three ingots less than the uh, previous one, which was eight. This one over here, which was the block, which got us, I think, 80, has got us 58. So I'm think that's a little bit better than before we must have just missed out on another ingot over there if that's um if that's anything to go by and we'll also just check how much is left in here nothing at all nothing at all in here a very little bit and nothing really too much now let's check how much is around there so we got eight from what we got before which was 12 so that's another one definitely not looking like it's efficient for one furnace and one exo flame so I guess we're going to have to do a little bit more. Uh, in here, we've also got a little bit and nothing left. So around here, from 100, we have got 64 plus 24. What's that? Uh, 88. So this is probably the best conversion we've had so far from the previous ones for the Thermal Lily. But still, nothing beating the efficiency over there. So now let's do a few more tests and see whether more furnaces or more exoflames will do anything different. So on screen now, I've just kind of represented it in some graphs for you guys so you can see what's going on. I think that kind of just says it all, really. You can see the differences between the two, and quite clearly, using the materials by themselves are a bit more efficient <laughs> than uh, using them for mana and then eventually getting getting the products. But you can see that the Thermal Lily is actually probably a little bit better in comparison to any of the other things going through the Endo Flame, but... As I say, that, that's pretty conclusive, so let's go on to the next chests. Alright, so you guys know the setup. You know what's going on with these by now, I'm sure. And what we're going to be doing in this one is this is going to be the first one. We'll be testing out how many exoflames uh, per furnace, what, what they'll do, what will happen. Now, we've got every one of these diluted mana pools completely filled up, and we're going to place an exoflame next to each of these furnaces. Then we're going to place another one, so this one's going to have one, that one's going to have two, that one's going to have four, that one's going to have eight. And I think we should get a pretty conclusive result from that. So this is not really time critical. I'll just put that on there. You can see it's, I've put the Manasseh monocle on. These won't intersect with each other. I can even just highlight that. You can see they will not intersect with each other. So that's not going to be a problem. And you can see just a little bit of mana comes out of that mana pool. So we'll definitely be able to get a few thermal lilies, uh, oh, sorry, a few exoflames out of this. Now, what we'll do is we'll do two there. You can see a little bit more has come out of there. We'll go four on this one. One, two, three, and we'll do it symmetrical. Four. And around here, we'll do eight. So we'll go one, two, three, four. And then here, one, two, three, yeah, three, and four. So we've got eight on that one there. You can see that one's gone down by a significant amount more. Each of these are filled up with gold, and we'll break break well break break and one last one like that now we'll wait for these to finish up and we'll see how many we get out alrighty so these have all finished now we can go and take a look at how much each of these got so this is one exo flame has got us 50 gold ingots for an entire mana pool the two exo flames has got us what is that 66 so considering i think we've got ourselves a bit of a, a trend so far i mean we've got a little bit more from one or from two than what we've got from one and we've used the same amount of mana so let's see what we get from four there you go 
80, what is it? 94. And then the last one here, which is 8. Okay, what's that? 128 plus 23 is 131, 151. So that's <laughs> pretty conclusive. More exoflames means a bit more efficiency, quite a bit more efficiency. And I think that's, that's how you're going to have to use these things. But we've still got more tests to do, so we can see how it goes across a few furnaces. And maybe that will have something interesting to show. So let's go around here where I've got this, <laughs> this all set up. So we've got the same setup. We only have one furnace, one pool, one furnace, because we've done it over there and we've already got that result. So we're going to be doing that from two till eight. So two, four, and eight. And we'll just start these like that. So we'll put that there. Same deal as before. We'll do it on this one again. Also, same deal as before. Surprise. And again, now we'll just make sure this one's in the range. And you can see all of those are in the range. You can see if I do this, it stays. Definitely still good. These are the same as before. And the only difference is we're going to be using these so that we get all of these starting at the same time. So we'll do this. And that looked like it didn't all start at the same time, but that's okay. Next one. Kind of strange, because the redstone switches off at the same time. And the last one. Now, this will be the only other thing that will really tell us something about the efficiency of these things. The next I want to check, because, I mean, there's definitely a speed difference. So, maybe we can go see what the speed does. Alright, so the results are in. Let's just go to this. This is the one furnace, one exo flame. We're just going to double check what our previous count was and that was 50 just to bear that in mind now we'll go ahead over to these ones here which were the two chests with one extra flame each of these has only got one extra flame if you do remember so for two chests uh, for two furnaces sorry we've got 24 plus 24 so that's 48 which is two less than before but it could be because for instance what i've noticed with these extra flames is when they start burning they burn as if you've burnt one piece of wood or whatever it is and then go down go down go down so it might just be that we just didn't have enough to make another one there so that's 48 two less than before T doesn't tell us too much yet so very close uh here we've got four and that is 11 11 12 and 12 so that's 24 plus 22 which is 46 and that also it's it doesn't seem to be looking good for the many furnace idea however uh, with this, another thing I've noticed, and you would have seen here, we've got 12, 11, and if you remember at the end of that last clip, I was wondering why these started separately, you think it was the redstone, but that was very naive, and it wasn't the redstone, it seems like over here, which direction oh, is that there, so that is facing east, so it looks like they might have some kind of a priority to the west going east, maybe, I don't know. So let's have a look here. We, these ones are the eight. So we've got six, six, five, 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 and five. So that is 30 plus, uh, what's that? 12. <laughs> so 42. So I'm willing to say that the furnace idea is not as efficient as the previous one of one exo, one furnace, many exo flames. Now, here we have the. Well, we, we're still going to enumerate that, but now we have the timer one. So you can see we've got <laughs> all of these lined up. You can see our control panel over here. We've got, I'll quickly demonstrate, is we've got a full stack of gold ore in there, which means it'll go into this furnace, collect up the bottom there, so we don't need to take it out at the end. Each of these has got a full stack, and what we're going to do is we're going to see how much, well, how fast in seconds or minutes or whatever's the most appropriate time, hopefully not hours, it takes to do a full stack of gold ore. Each of these has got one in it. And so we've got the eight, four, and two, and then one exo flame controlling these. And this one over here is one by itself with some coal in it. So everything's going to pour down and pour back. Well, this one doesn't even need that either. So that's what's going to happen there. Now, another thing which might come into your guys' heads, or some of you guys might wonder, is will this pull through into this furnace fast enough? And this one is not moving too fast, and I have tested this one out. It definitely does go into the furnace and stacks up before it goes through to the other end. So, it, it, in other words, what I'm saying is it's not going to have no gold to smelt. So, that's that's pretty much what I'm saying there. Now, all of these should be connected, and let's hope I've done this correctly. And what I'll do is I will push the button.
So there you have it. Now, I bet you're all wondering which one is the most efficient. Now, if you had to go in the beginning of your game and you had to use a, an Exo Flame, that would definitely be good for if you wanted to get things done quickly, get them smelted up quick, and you've got mana lying around. Now, the time when it becomes efficient to use an Exo Flame instead of just putting the raw materials in is probably before, between three or four per furnace. And at that stage, you definitely will be better off putting your, your resources into the mana as opposed to putting them into getting the actual item. So it'll be faster, it'll also be more efficient. So definitely between three and four. And aside from that, that's just pretty much all that we've done today. <laughs> but yeah, this is a little bit of a different episode. So if you guys did enjoy it, let me know. It was just something different. I wanted to try some things out. I do enjoy sciencing stuff and sciencing Britannia as much as we could really just read it if we could <laughs> could actually just look at the code. If we did that, we probably could find out these things, but it's more fun to test them out. And there you have it. So thank you very much, guys. If you did enjoy it, leave a like. Leave a comment if you've got any questions or you can point out what I've done wrong or what I can improve on. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you next time.